Good morning, guys, and happy birthday to Franklin. I hope you have an awesome birthday, Franklin. Okay, friends, so we've been learning a lot of new stuff this week because tomorrow happens to be the 1st of April. So let's get started and go over some of the new stuff that we've learned. Ready? Hello, cha-cha-cha. Hello, cha-cha-cha. Hello, and how are you? Cha cha cha, I'm fine. Cha cha cha, I'm fine. Cha cha cha, and I hope that you are too. Cha cha cha. Okay, so let's go over the letter we learned yesterday. Who could tell me what the name of this letter is? What letter is this? It's the letter E. Can we say E? Ready? E. And what sound does the letter E make, guys? It says, ah, ah. Can we say, ah, ah. Ready? Ah, ah. Like, ah, ah. Egg, right? Can we say, ah, ah, egg. Ready? Ah, ah, egg. Very good. So, we also learned a new sight word yesterday. Our sight word from yesterday was S T O. P. Who could tell me what S-T-O-P spells? Good. S-T-O-P says stop. Could we say stop? Ready? Stop. Like you need to stop at the red light. <laughs> Can we say stop? Ready? Stop. Good. So we also started a new word family. So let's go over what we've learned so far about our new word family. Just like some of our other word families, not all of them will be, but the ones we're gonna start with, the ending sound is actually a word of its own. This is the AT word family. And remember AT was one of our old sight words from like December. What does AT spell? It spells at, can we say at, ready, at. So now we're gonna use the at end sound with some letters to make words. So basically we're combining everything we learned from our letter sounds and our sight words here to combine to make some new words. So the first one we started off with is the letter C. Who could tell me what sound the letter C makes? Good, it says ka, ka. Could we say ka, ka? And now we're gonna add at to that. So we have ka. Ooh, this marker's starting to run out. I'm gonna switch markers. We have ka. There we go, beautiful. At, ka, at, ka, at. What word do we hear with ka, at? Good, our kitty cat friend, meow. Good, ka, ka, cat. Good. So we have cat. Let's see if we can make another word, okay? I'm gonna add an H to this one. What sound does the letter H make? Good, it says ha, ha. Remember, we pretend like we're blowing out a candle. Can we say ha, ha. Ready? Ha, ha. So we have ha, at, ha, at, ha, at, ha, at. What word do we hear? Good, it's hat. Can we say hat, ready, hat, good. And our last one starts with an S. So you wanna remember what sound S makes? Good, remember it's our snake letter. It looks like a snake and it sounds like one too. It says S, like a snake. Can we say S, good, we have S. Now we're gonna add at, so S, at, S. Good. It's the word sat, like I sat on my couch. Can we say sat? Sat. Very good. So I'm going to say the words you repeat after me. Ready? At, at, cat, cat, hat, hat, sat, sat. Very good, guys. Awesome. Okay, so we didn't go over yesterday our new numbers of the month. But I'd like to go over pretty much all of our old numbers first, because all of our old numbers from now on are going to start with a 1. So, we're going to start with our sight word, um, sight word, oh my goodness, our numbers from like two months ago. So we're just going to review them all. 
Who could tell me what number a one, and I'm not going to do it in order, so please make sure you're paying attention. What number a one and a two is? What number is a one and a two? Good. It's 12. Can we say 12? Ready? 12. Now I'm going to make it a one and a one. What number is this? Good. It's 11. Can we say 11? Ready? 11. Good. Now I'm going to change this to a four. What number is a one and a four? Good. It's 14. Can we say 14? Ready? 14. Good. Now I'm going to change this four to a three. What number is a one and a three? Good. It's 13. Can we say 13? Ready? 13. Awesome. So those were our old numbers. Now we're going to learn two more. Our new number is going to be a one and a oh, one. I'm running. my voice there okay I'm gonna make it a one and a five does anyone know what number a one and a five is good it's 15 can we say 15 ready 15 get one more time 15 good and then we have a one and a six so we have a one and a six this number is 16 can we say 16 ready 16. Awesome. So every time repeat after me. 15, 15, 16, 16. Very good. Those are our two new numbers. And like I said, we're going to keep going over all the old numbers that are with a one in front of them just because we're starting to learn so many and I don't want us to forget them. So those are our new numbers and we're going to keep going over them. Now let's go over our shape of the month. Okay, shaped like an egg, right? For eh, eh, egg for our sound and ladder of the week. But what shape is that? Who could tell me what is the name of this shape? Good. Could we say oval? Ready? Oval. Good. And who could tell me, does an oval have curved sides or straight sides? Good. It has curved sides. So could we say curved sides? Ready? Curved sides. So all those curved sides, but there's a difference from a circle. Does anyone remember what it is? Yeah, ovals are not round, right? It's not round like a ball. Like I said, if I tried to bounce my oval, it would make the worst ball ever just poof, right over. Okay, ovals are not round, they're, but they do have curved sides. So that's what we need to remember. Kind of looks like someone took a circle, almost went poof, and squished it together. So it still has curved sides, but it's not round. So could we say curved sides, ready? Curved sides, an oval has curved sides. Very good. And our color of the month is this guy. What is the name of this color? Who can tell me what the name of this color is? Good, it's yellow. Could we say yellow, ready? Yellow, very good. One more time, yellow. Good. This is the color yellow. And if you guys notice this month, a lot of our flowers are going to start to grow. And we might see some yellow dandelions or daffodils, okay, or any other kind of yellow flower. So it's going to be a color we might see everywhere this month. So every time, can we say yellow? Ready? Yellow. Very good. Okay, friends. So those were all the new things we have learned. Now, we're going to continue talking about ways we use water. So last night for homework, I had asked you guys to send me the different ways you use water. And I'm going to grab it right now um, from my phone, and I'm going to read you guys the list we made. Now, I'm going to, going to email you guys this list later. I'm going to make it as a Google Doc, so that way we can keep editing it. So if for some reason you didn't send me your ways we use water yet, that's okay, because um, I'm going to leave it on a way we could edit it. So if you email me it later today, I will just add your reason to the list. So, but let's hear what our friends had to say. So I asked you guys how we use water. Alexis said that people use water to drink so they won't be dehydrated. Ooh, very good word, Alexis. Does anybody remember what dehydrated means? We've talked about this movie once or twice. Yeah, dehydrated means like really, really thirsty, right? So thirsty, it almost makes you sick. So that is very good, Alexis. We do need to drink water so we don't get dehydrated, right? Very good. 
Jordan said that humans use water in this sink, bathtub, and a glass of water to drink. Absolutely. Very good, Jordan. Jordan also asked her sisters, which was very helpful. Good job, Jordan. I like how you asked other people, too. Jordan's sister, Dylan, said that plants use water to live. And her sister, Avery, said that we use water for driving um, and we can wash our car, right, too, with it and washing our hands. Very good, girls. Very nice job, Hayes, girls. Kevin said that we use water to grow plants and to drink it. Absolutely. You guys definitely got this. Very good, friends. Clive said that we drink water. We go to the beach in the water. Yes, yeah, certainly, right? What fun would the beach be without any water, right? Okay, we got more answers. Well, you guys are really good at this. Nicholas said that people drink water to stay hydrated, just like Alexis. He knew that word, right? Remember, dehydrated means we're really thirsty and sick because we don't have any water. And hydrated means we have enough water. So good job, guys. He said that we use it in the bath and shower to wash vegetables, cleaning, cooking, watering plants in the garden, and playing sports, like filling up our swimming pool. Certainly, that would be the worst swimming pool ever with no water in it. He said we also use it to cool off, right? When we get really, really hot, that's a great choice. Nicholas also said that animals drink water, right? We saw that with Dusty yesterday. I sent you guys that little mini video. They use it to wash and to cool off, just like we do. He said plants, the water helps them to grow, washes off dirt and bugs. That's for sure. He said cactuses store water for later since it doesn't rain that much in the desert, which is certainly right, right? We talked about the desert before. It doesn't get a lot of water, so their plants have to store it. Very good. And next month, we're actually going to read a book about a cactus. So good job. You know that already. Catherine said that people drink water, use water to wash, and swim in the water. Absolutely. She said animals also drink water, and animals swim in the water like ducks, certainly. We wash, animals also wash themselves with water, like elephants, right? We saw that in our book yesterday, their elephant in our trunk. She says plants grow taller and bigger by drinking water, such as trees and flowers, and water makes vegetables fresh. Absolutely. You guys are really good at this. Cooper says that um, people use water at home and drink water at home, certainly. Plants need water for food, and animals drink the water. Absolutely, yeah. Wow, you guys are really good. Toby said that people and animals drink water, Plants turn water into food, and people use it to take baths and showers, certainly. And Shub said that people use water to shower and swim and to help them make food, right? Yeah, we even saw that when I was making pasta, right? We pour the water in the pot and it had to boil it. That's how we got our steam. Shub says animals use water to drink and to live, and plants need it to live. So absolutely, friends, this is an amazing list. And it seems to me like you guys know a lot already about how we use water. So if you are not on that list, what you can do is email me later today, and I will <coughs> add your reason to the list, okay? So we're going to continue talking more about how we use water today. <clears throat> but those were all excellent examples. So it shows to me you guys have been listening a lot this unit because you already know all this stuff about how we use water. So we're going to read a book today. Let me just pull it in a little bit. This book's kind of small. Called I Am Water to learn more about water. And if we look on the cover, we see it is raining, right? Our liquid type of precipitation. Let's see how we use this water. Watch me. I am water. I am home for fish, right? Fish certainly need water. It's their home. We're going to talk a lot about this week about different types of animals that live in water. I'm going to send you guys a video and a little sorting thing you could do, and we're going to read some books about water animals. So, yes, yeah, certainly these animals need the water because it's their home. I am rain for the earth. Now, they're showing the rain falling on these plants, right? Why do plants need rain? Why do plants need rain, guys? Yeah, right, they use the water to help them make food and to grow. I am a drink for the people. So the boy is drinking water out of the water fountain, right? And we all drink water to stay nice and healthy. And as we said, stay hydrated, right? Which means we have lots, we have enough water and we're not thirsty. I am bath water for babies. And I hope for everyone else too. I hope it's not just babies taking baths, right? We all take a bath or a shower to stay clean. So water help keeps us helps keep us clean, right? And not just us, we use it to wash our clothes, wash our dishes, right? We wash the car with it. We can wash all kinds of things with it. So water helps to keep us clean, certainly. 
I am all that and more. So we see the animals here are drinking water as well. Just like people drink water, animals need to drink water. Right, we saw a little video with Dusty yesterday drinking water. So animals need to drink water to stay hydrated as we do. I am water for cooking. So these people did just what I did. Remember, I put water on the stove to boil, so I was going to make pasta with it, right? And I showed you guys how the steam came off of it. Well, here they are. They're making pasta too, or noodles. I don't know what they're making. It looks like they're spaghetti or noodles. And they are using the water. I am ice for cooling. Hmm, friends, tell me, how do we get ice again from liquid water? Who remembers? Yeah, right, we take our liquid water and then we put it in the freezer, which freezes it into a solid, hard piece of ice. So we definitely need water in order to make ice, certainly. And ice helps keep us cool, right? That's what a bunch of you told me in your answer. Ice helps keep us cool or not too hot, right? And we also put it in our drinks to keep it from getting too hot, right? No one wants to drink hot, nasty water. We want a nice, cool, refreshing drink. I am snow for sledding. So same thing, friends. How do we get snow? Who remembers how we get snow? Right. Remember, it needs to be really cold, like in winter. Okay. And then the liquid water in the cloud freezes and turns into snow, right? So it needs to be cold. And then again, it turns from a liquid into a solid, which is our snow. I am pools for splashing, right? We need to fill our pool with water or it would be a pretty boring pool. We couldn't swim. So yeah, we need water in our pools. So we can certainly play with the water, right? In the pools, or even if you go through like the sprinkler, you could play there, right? So we could play with water. I am all that and more. Now this picture is kind of hard to tell, but this is fog here, right? Remember we said fog is made up of water vapor? Okay, so this is not a very easy picture to see. Well, it's supposed to be fog. I am puddles for boots. So this boy is jumping up and down in puddles. We know Peppa Pig likes her muddy puddles, right, guys? So how do we get muddy puddles? Well, we need water, right? We need water to go into the dirt to make mud. So without water, we wouldn't have puddles to play in or muddy puddles for Peppa Pig to jump in. So here's another way we could play with water. Also, if you guys have ever used water balloons, right, we need to fill up the balloon with water and then we could throw it. So we certainly need water for water balloons. So there's many ways you can play with water. I am rivers for boats, right? So boats certainly need water, right? We can't use a boat without any water. And here they're fishing, okay, which we also need water to go fishing in. I am lakes for swimming, right? So you don't just have to swim in a pool. You can also swim in a lake. There's a lot of ways we can use water. I am waves for watching, right? Clive said you use water when you go to the beach, right? Water's at the beach, right? It would be a pretty boring beach with no water. I am all that and I am more. Watch me, watch over me. I am water. So these are all the different ways in this book that we use water, and there's quite a few ways. So I hope you guys enjoyed learning about water. We're going to keep talking about it all this week. I'm going to read you guys some more books, and we're going to watch a lot of videos that I have because there's so many cool videos about how we use water, how people like drink water, how animals use water and plants. I have a ton of that. So I hope you guys are enjoying learning about water. So we're going to do some more math right now. I'm just going to switch it over to our other camera view, and we're going to do more of our shape puzzles. Okay, friends, so I have another one of our shape puzzles. Ooh, you, can you see that? I guess, no, you can. Okay, so we're going to continue to talk about our shapes and how we're going to use them to make these puzzles. Now, again, um, it might take me a little bit, friends, because um, I have to scan it, but I will be attaching all of these to our lesson plans for today. So if they're a little bit late, guys, that's why. Um takes me a while to scan all this stuff, but I'm going to scan these in for you guys and also the pages that have the shapes that you can cut out and um, make into the pieces because I'm assuming you guys don't have these pieces at home. Some of you might, which is awesome, but I'm assuming most of you don't. So you'll be able to cut them out um, with construction paper or even just computer paper. You can color them. Um, say you don't have 
you know, construction paper, which again, you might not have at home. You can just print out the black and white copy and color, say, you know, these yellow and these green before you cut it and then cut it up, whatever works for you. Um, so I'm going to show you again how to do these puzzles. But first, let's go over our shapes. So what is the name of this shape, guys? What shape is this? Good. It's a triangle. Okay. And how many sides does our triangle have? Good. It has three straight sides, right? Good. What shape is this? This is our square. How do we know it's a square, guys? Good. So our square has four straight sides, right? And four right angles. And what makes a square special? All the sides are the same, right? We could say all the sides are the same. Can we say that? All the sides are the same. Very good. Now we have this shape. What is this shape? Good. It's trapezoid. Can we say trapezoid? Ready? Trapezoid. Good. What do we know about trapezoids, guys? Good. Okay. So trapezoids have four straight sides, right? The sides are not the same, right? We have a long side and a short side. And also it has no right angles, right? So can we say four straight sides? No right angles, right? That's what we know about trapezoids. Now, our last shape, we have two of the same. And it has two names, two. My goodness, what a confusing thing. Two of the same, and it has two of the same names. So what is the one of the names of the shape? And what is the other? Good, we have diamond, diamond, or rhombus rhombus this is our shape from last month what do you guys know about diamond or slash rhombuses good right it has four straight sides and they're all the same now the thing that's a little confusing here is they're both rhombus right but we just have to look at the size okay this one is much wider and this one's much skinnier so when we have them in our puzzles we'll just kind of have to figure out looking at the size which one goes I don't know why they did it this way, guys. Honestly, it's just the way they made these puzzles. So I'm going to give you guys a slightly harder puzzle to work on than the one we did yesterday. Because yesterday, we just kind of had to pop the pieces down. Today, we're going to do one. We're going to have to rotate or spin the shape around, okay? So I'm going to show you what that looks like. We're going to make a fish because I thought that was pretty good since we're learning about water, right, to make a fish. So we'll start with the head of the fish, okay? Again, I might just look at it and know what it is because sometimes it's easy to just tell. But let's say we didn't. Let's count the sides and figure out what shape it is. We have one, two, three, four straight sides for the head here, right? And all the sides, are they the same or different? All the sides are the same, okay? So we have four straight sides. They're all the same. Okay, so what shape does this look like, guys? Yeah, it looks like a rhombus to me, but which rhombus? Well, we'll try both. Let's see if this one works. Does this rhombus work, guys? No, right? Look, there's a big gap right here, so that doesn't work. So let's try our other rhombus. And I'd say that works perfectly, right? Okay. Oh, you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to move our rhombus for one second because you can't see the shape that's behind it. Which I want to do next. Then we'll put it right back. So there's two of the same shape here, right? So we know we're going to do the same shape twice. So let's figure out what shape that is. It has one, two, three straight sides. Well, what shape has three straight sides, guys? Yeah, our triangle, right? So let's try it. Hold on. I don't know why it keeps coming out of focus. There we go. I got it. You might just not be able to see me now, but I really would rather the puzzle be in focus. Okay, so we have our two triangles, right? One, two. Then we'll put our rhombus back in place. Okay, perfect, right? So let's do our next part. So our next one has a shape that has one, two, three, four straight sides. Now, we have a lot of shapes that have four straight sides. Does this have right angles? No, right? What's our shape that does not have any right angles? It's our trapezoid, right? But let's say I was confused and I want to try another shape. I'm going to show you how we can tell if it doesn't work. Say I didn't know trapezoid. Say I try this square here. Okay, does this work? Does it fill up the whole space? 
No, right? I have this big gaping hole over here. That is totally not what I want. So square crochet sets, but doesn't work. Okay. So we, we can even see that there's a big hole there. Definitely doesn't work. Now I'm going to put my trapezoid here. Okay, good. Trapezoid, right? Uh-oh. Did it work? No. Does anyone see a problem? Yeah, okay. There's a hole here. I have the right shape, but I have to turn it, okay, till it fits. Remember, I want it to fit perfectly with no space. Does this fit? No, I think I just made that even worse, right? There's a big, bigger hole. So we're going to keep turning, 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 and look. Now it fits perfectly, right? Now our shape fits perfectly, okay? I just kind of had to play around with it. Okay, so we'll keep going. So again, we have one, two, three, four straight sides. Again, you might just look at it and know what it is, but in case you don't, we'll try to figure it out. So what shape has four straight sides? Okay, it looks like all the sides are the same. That could be two shapes, right? It could be, right, squares have all the sides the same or rhombus. But look, does this thing have right angles? No. So rhombuses sometimes can have right angles, but our rhombus totally does not. So we'll try our rhombuses. Remember, I have two different kinds, so we'll try both. And we'll see which ones fit. Okay, does that look like it fits? I'm going to turn it so you can see it. Does that look good? No, that's terrible, right? Look, we have a big big hole here. It doesn't even fit in the line. So let's try our skinny rhombus because this one is way too big. Obviously, it doesn't even fit. Does that work? Yeah, right? That looks pretty good. And again, I'll show you, say I wasn't sure if it was a square rhombus. I saw four straight sides and I was like, well, I know a square is four straight sides too. And I tried it. Let's see if that works. Does that look good, guys? No, right? It definitely does not fill up our puzzle. Okay, we have a big gap here, so you know this shape does not work. But if we use our rhombus here, it works perfectly. Okay, so let's keep going with our puzzle. What shape is this? We have one, two, three straight sides. So what shape has three straight sides? It's our triangle, right? So let's try our triangle out. Ooh, hold on, I didn't put enough triangles on the table. I'm trying to get it out of the bag here. And it's like all the way at the bottom, of course. Okay, so I have my triangle. Hmm, does that work? No, it doesn't fit, right? So we have to rotate or turn it till it fits. Okay, still doesn't work. Still doesn't work. And, oh, look, perfect now, right? I just got to keep turning it till it fits. Okay, perfect, right? So our last two pieces again, one, two, three, four straight sides. I don't see any right angles. You guys tell me, what shape should I put? Yeah, how'd you know? Okay. Okay. I, hopefully, you said rhombus, right? Again, we have different kinds of rhombuses, so we're going to try them out. So if I try out my fat rhombus, oh, that does not work at all, right? It doesn't fit. It's way too big for the spot. Try this rhombus, and it works perfectly, right? I kind of just have to turn it till it gets in the spot, right? All right, that doesn't quite work, so I'm just going to keep turning or rotating it, and look, it fits perfectly. So we made our fishy, guys. Awesome. And I just totally knocked this one out of place. So, again, um, I'm going to attach these today. That's definitely the reason this video is going to be totally late. I apologize because it's going to take me a while to scan this stuff this morning. Um, but I'm going to do that, and I will attach it to this video. And then, like I said, you guys can either color the shapes and then cut them out. Or if you have construction paper of the same colors, you can just, like, It'll even tell you what color you need on the paper, so don't worry about that. You can trace them and then cut them out. Honestly, whatever is easier for you. And then you'll be able to use them to make these puzzles because I'm assuming you don't have these pieces at home. If you do, though, that's awesome. I'm also going to send you the pattern blocks themselves. I mean, the pattern pages with the puzzles on them. Also, if you're able to, I know a couple of people have been having problems with it, but if you if you can get it to where our building box games on the computer are exactly this with the shapes, okay, and they're just a digital version of it instead. If for some reason, say, you don't have a printer and can't make these, which I totally understand. So those are two ways you can do this. 
And then we're going to play one more game. Just give me a second. I'm just going to pause this and I'm going to set the other game up. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we are going to play a game called What's the Missing Card? I'm going to put my cards, these are the counting cards, I, uh, numeral cards I sent you guys last week. Um, and if for some reason you don't have those or don't have a printer, honestly, you can just make these with scrap pieces of paper index cards. You just have to label them from 1 to 10. Um, today we're just going to use the 1 to 5 cards, though, to play a game. Okay, so... I'm going to play with you guys a game called What's the Missing Card? Okay, kind of like we've done What's the Missing Step, and now we're going to do What's the Missing Card? So first, let's count our cards, because they're in counting order. We have one, two, three, four, five, and we'll count backwards. Five, four, three, two, one. So for what the missing... For this game, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have you guys close your eyes, and then I'm going to take a card away, and we're going to have to count to figure out which one's missing. So can you guys close your eyes and cover them? Close them, close them, close them, keep them closed, keep them closed, keep them closed, keep them closed. Okay, you can open your eyes. Now, I took a card away. We have to figure out what card's missing. So what we're going to do is we're going to count to figure out what card's missing. Okay, so we have one, three, one. What number did I take away? What number comes after one and before three? We have a four, three, and after one. What number comes between the two of them? One, two, right? Two. Two is missing. I took away two, right? Well, two comes after one and before three. Okay, so same thing, guys. Close your eyes and cover them, cover them, cover them. Keep them closed, keep them closed, keep them closed. Okay, open them. I took another card away. Now let's figure out what card I took away. Ready? We have one, two, four. So what's missing? We're missing the number that's after two, but before four. So one, two, what number comes here? One, two, three, eight. We're missing three. Three comes after two. And before four. Very good. So ready, same thing. Close your eyes, close your eyes, close your eyes. Keep them closed, keep them closed, keep them closed, keep them closed. Okay, open your eyes. Hmm, I don't see a gap this time, but something's definitely missing. We have two, three, four, five. Guys, do we start counting on two? No, right? Absolutely not. So what's missing here? What number do we start with? One, right? One. We can't start counting with two. One comes before two, certainly. We definitely can't start counting with two. One, two. Okay, good. We're going to do two more because I didn't. I missed two numbers so far. So close your eyes, close your eyes, close your eyes. Cover them, cover them. Keep them closed, keep them closed, keep them closed. Open your eyes. Okay, what number is missing now? Well, we have a gap this time, so let's count. We have one, two, three. Hmm. What number comes after two, I mean after three, but before five? Well, I can also count the other way. We'll make this a little bit easier. We have five, three, two, one, right? So we could do this either way. We could either say what number comes before five? Five, three, two, one. What number comes? Before five, four, right? Five, four, three, two, one. So we can count either direction. Okay, close your eyes one more time. Cover them, cover them, keep them closed, keep them closed. Okay, you can open your eyes. Again, we don't really see a gap, but I definitely took something away. So we can count either direction and we'll see what's missing. We have one, two, three, four. Something's missing. Number comes after four, guys. One more counter. Five, right? I took away five. Hmm. 
So that's that game, this game you can easily play um, with the counting cards I sent last week. Again, if you don't have them, you can just make them and you can play it with mommy, daddy, your babysitter, grandma, grandpa, one of your brothers and sisters, basically who's ever home. Just have them take a card away for you and you can count and tell them what card's missing. So also a friendly reminder, guys, tomorrow um, at 1030, we are going to be having our Zoom meeting. OK, so I will have sent you the email. I'm going to send it again today just in case you don't have it with the link. Um, so you can meet me there at 1030 tomorrow. If for some reason you can't make it because I totally understand you guys are all busy. I'm going to be recording the session and sending it out later um, so you'll be able to watch it. Also, I'm still going to be doing our regular circle time video just because there's so much stuff that we have to talk about. Um, during circle time and I can't get it all done in the video. I'm going to get some of it done in the Zoom video, um, but I'm going to do a little bit by myself too, just so we can get everything because Zoom cuts you off at 40 minutes and I'm sure you guys have noticed our circles themselves are like 40 minutes. So um, I would like to get to talk to you guys because I haven't talked to you in about a month now and I really miss you. So um, we're going to do both of those tomorrow. So I will see you tomorrow and please let me know if you have any questions about Zoom. You can just email me. Um, I'm not maybe the best at the platform because it's still new to me, but I will definitely try to help you the best I can. So I will see you tomorrow live on Zoom. Bye.